What's going on guys? We're having a great day today. Today I want to talk about us not forgetting the Lord. And I was reading my Bible the other day and I was in Deuteronomy. And I read this passage where Moses is speaking to the Israel people talking about God's promise to bring them into the promised land, which is Israel. And I just thought how important it is to not forget who God is. When we're in the valleys and when we're on top of the hill, whenever everything is going our way, whenever everything is prosperous, how important it is to not see what we have done, but see what God has done. And that is what Moses is teaching the Israel nation in Deuteronomy. So I'm going to read chapter 8, verse 7 through 20, and it says this, For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of oil, olive, and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness, thou shalt not like anything in it, a land whose stones are iron, and out of the, whose hills thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God, and not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses, and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thy heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Who led through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at the, thy later end. And thou say in thy, thine heart, My power and the might of my hand hath gotten me this wealth, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he sware unto thy fathers as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do, not, do it all, forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroyeth before your face, so shall ye perish, because ye would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. So if we look at verses 7 through 10, Moses is telling the people of Israel, the Jewish people, all the good things that God is going to give them. That they're going to be in a good land with pomegranates and honey. There will be no scarceness. They will not lack anything. You will be full and you shall bless the Lord for what which he hath given thee. And that's what Moses is promising them because the Lord has promised the Israel people that he is going to bring them to a land like this, the land of Israel. So we see in verse 11 a very big warning from Moses. He's warning the Israel people that whenever God has given you all these things, whenever you are prosperous and you are at the top of the hill where everything is going your way, do not forget the Lord. Do not forget his commandments and his statutes and his judgments. Do not begin to live for yourself and live to please yourself. But always remember the Lord, that he is the one who brought us here, so we do all things for his glory. And in verse 12 and 13, we see that the people of Israel are prosperous. It says that they have, they are eaten, they are full, they have built good homes, and they dwell in these homes. Their flocks have multiplied, their silver and their gold is multiplied, and everything that they have is multiplied. But through this multiplication, through them being so prosperous, in verse 14, Moses says, Then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. See, Moses in, in verse 14 in 15 and even 16, Moses points the picture back to God. He reminds the Israel people of God's faithfulness. He talks about how God brought them out of Egypt from their house of bondage as slaves in Egypt. He led them through the great and terrible wilderness where fiery serpents and scorpions and drought were, where there was no water, but he brought them water out of a rock, who fed them in the wilderness with manna as the bread fell out of the sky and fed these people. So Moses is pointing them back to God, showing them God's faithfulness, reminding them of the God that they serve and who they should ultimately put their trust in, that they would not forget the Lord. See, sometimes it's very easy for us, especially in this modern American culture, to be so prosperous that we forget the Lord. That's why it's important that we stay in His Word and, and ultimately remember, remember His faithfulness, that what He started in us, He will finish. That he is the author of our salvation. He is the only reason that we are still alive right now. So we must not forget the Lord, but we must wholly remember the Lord, trust in the Lord, and thank the Lord. Do not forget him. And I love this part in verse 16. He says, Which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, 
and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy later end. See that God fed them in the wilderness to make them reliant upon him. They were reliant upon God, and that's why they were humbled. Because without God, they would have died in the wilderness. But since they relied on him, they humbled themselves, recognizing the greatness of God, that God might prove them, and that he would do good to thee at thy later end. That them trusting in God, not trusting in their own ability, their own self, did them good in the later end. And that is why God is so good. See, God gives us multiple commandments that we are to obey. Obviously, we're, we are not saved by keeping these uh, commandments. We are not saved by, by being good. We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. But this part just shows that God has commandments set in place for our good. That we are to remain within the, the scripture, remain within the Bible. And that, that we are not to break his law. We are not to go against him and be unrighteous. Not because God wants us to be these slaves who just obey him, but God wants what's good for us. And that when we follow in righteousness, follow God, obey his commandments, whether or not good things actually happen to you, you are living a good life. You are living a life that is pleasing to the Lord. That's not to mean that you won't suffer, that you're not going to face a persecution, and that everything's going to go fine. That's not what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is trusting in God, following his commandments, obeying him, in itself leads to a good life. Because God is good. He, he does things that in our later end, it will be good for us. But then he also gives more, more judgments on them, is what Moses is saying. And thou say, say in thy heart, my power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord. See, verse 17 and verse 14 kind of go together. That their heart is lifted up. They're saying that we have all these things because of our ability, because of our power, because of our strength. But Moses is going to humble them in verse 18 through 20. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. See, the, so God has given us great blessings. He has given us great wealth some of us and he has given some of us great prosperity but it is not for us to be lifted up and it is not even of our own doing it is all that god may establish his covenant now he is speaking to the people of israel in this sense god's covenant with the israel nation not us today but this still goes to show that god gives the power and wealth to establish his covenant and this day be establish his will that everything happens according to God's will, and he allows things so that his will can be accomplished. So it is nothing that we have done, nothing that we could ever do. Like even if we have wealth and power and, and prosperity, it is all because God has allowed it. It is by his hand, his power, that we have been able to have such things. And then Moses warns them right here, And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroyeth before your face, so shall ye perish, because ye would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. So Moses is giving them a stark warning here that you must obey the Lord. If you don't, you will perish. And I, I in verse 20, it's very interesting. He says, which the Lord destroyeth before your face. See, the Israel people, they saw all of these miracles. They saw God destroying mighty nations right in front of them. Sometimes God just won the battle for them right there and then. And they saw these works. And now Moses is putting it back on them that if you do not obey the Lord, he will destroy you as you have seen him destroy other nations. And that, was, that should bring great fear to us, but that would surely bring great fear to the Israel people. But as we see in many books in the in the Old Testament, shortly after Deuteronomy, the Israel people do forsake God many times, and God is true to his promise. Many times they are scattered, they are de destroyed from Israel. And so God does desire for us to be obedient to his commandments. But this all being said, Moses is warning the people not to do these things. But ultimately they do do these things. They rely on their, their own abilities, their own selves, and they get judgment for it. But the this is all referring to the Israel people entering in to the nation of Israel. But in the same manner, how these Israelites, how they they say that their their power and their might gotten them this wealth, got them this prosperity, these blessings. 
But that's not true. The Lord gave it to them. And in the same way, when we look at our salvation, God is so consistent. Because the same thing he tells the Israel people is, is so true to our salvation today. Many Christians, and I have been guilty of this as well, but many Christians, I would say almost every single Christian at one point has felt this way, that man, they are such good people that they, they're going to get to heaven because you know they're being good, they're following God's commandments, they're obeying Him. And that's why they're going to get to heaven. But it's just not true. The same way that God has got, given these people their wealth, their prosperity, has brought them into the land of Israel, who led them through the wilderness, destroying the nations in front of them. In that same way, that was all God. That was all His power, all His authority, all His might. In the same way, we are saved, not of ourselves, but we are saved by God alone. See, we could never earn salvation. We could never accomplish it. We could never work for it. We can never have the time to come to the knowledge of God because the very first sin we committed, we should have been killed because of our sin against God. We were deserving of wrath after the very first sin. So we shouldn't even have time to come to know who God is. But we can never be saved on our own goodness. It is all of God. Never forget that. It is by His grace. It is by His power. It is by His love. It is by His long suffering allowing us to come to know Him. It is of His knowledge and of it is of His Son, Jesus Christ. And that is the only way that we can be saved by repenting of our sins, trusting in Christ alone because of our sin, our wickedness, our inability to be perfect as God is perfect. Because of that, we are deserving of punishment and wrath from God. But God loved us enough to send His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die upon the cross for our sins. Because Christ was perfect and sinless, He was a pure and righteous sacrifice. And so God's wrath was poured out, poured out upon His Son, Jesus Christ. So that when we trust in Christ alone, we are no longer under the wrath of God because Christ took that upon Himself. So that by repenting of our sins and trusting in Jesus Christ, we can be saved. Because Christ died upon that cross. He was buried. And on the third day, He rose again, proving that He is God. And what He said is true. So if only you repent and trust in Christ as Lord, you will be saved. Arjuna, you're not alone. Jesus loves you. I love you. Have a blessed rest of your day.